If you're creating a game and you've decided you need some multiplayer functionality like leaderboards, character progression, or maybe a character inventory, or you just wanna like sync your player data across multiple devices, well, you're probably in need of some kind of uh, backend. So you've got a few options uh, in this regard. You could, one, build your own server. So you could build it with uh, something like Node or .NET Core, uh, plug it into a database like MySQL or Cassandra, or maybe like a non-relational database like MongoDB. Uh, you could add a cache to it like Redis. Then you could host it up on AWS or Azure or something like that. Uh, and then you've got a uh, manage the server as your game grows, right? So you've got to scale it yourself kind of thing. I've been building servers for about 10 years now and I love it and it's fantastic and super fun. Uh, but even with a wealth of knowledge, it is, it is a big job, right? Like, and there are a lot of things that can go wrong, but uh, that is an option for a backend. A second option is to have your players uploading to like a shared Google Docs <laughs> uh, document online somewhere. Uh, but just keep in mind that everybody knows you never go full retail. Lastly, and probably the most appropriate for most situations is to use an actual backend service. Uh, for example, Loot Locker, who by the way, is the sponsor of this video. Uh, just recently, I used Loot Locker to actually create the leaderboard and the authentication system for my uh, time trial game, which I had in the last video. And honestly, it took me like one hour to hook up authentication hook up a leaderboard and also save everyone's ghost data uh, on the cloud, on the on Loot Locker, for people to easily just click and then race everybody's ghost. Super, super easy, highly recommended. And the best thing about it, uh, I think anyway, for any of your small games, it's probably going to be free indefinitely. You're, you're not gonna hit that threshold of uh, daily active users, or uh, daily monthly users, I believe it is. I believe it's anything under 10,000 users a month and it's gonna be free for you. And then once you go above that, I think the first tier is about $250 a month or something. But once you reach that amount of players, I think it was something like 40,000 or 50,000, uh, you're gonna be pulling in revenue anyway and 250 bucks is, is nothing to pay for this kind of uh, feature set that they provide. So this video is not going to be a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up Loot Locker because honestly their docs are really good and I don't think you'll need it. Uh, it's just going to be kind of like an introduction to the features and what it can do for your game just to see if you're interested and you want to use it. Okay, so I've built this little demo scene here just to show you some of the features and how easy it is to get started with Loot Locker. Uh, and the first feature I want to talk about is authentication as that is the first action players need to do if they want to start uh, interacting in the multiplayer setting. So for this demo, I'm just using the white label login, so a username and password, or it could be email and password, which is just the easiest one for the demo but as you can see, they support all the major platforms for authentication and also guest login. So you could just offer a button that says just log in as guest if they don't wanna to have to deal with kind of like the account creation uh, and then they can get into playing with multiplayer, but they'll be a little bit restricted and you know they won't have any way to get their account back once it's gone. So anyway, let's play with this. So I'm just gonna put in maybe tarot and for the password, I'll have password and let's register. And that will just do some stuff in the background. And now it's asking me to enter a name. I've already used Haradev on another account, so let's do um, Tarnished. I've been playing a shitload of Elden Ring. So we're into the dashboard now, but let's just go over how easy the authentication code is. And by the way, all this is available on my GitHub. So as far as the code goes, it's really not many lines of code to get a full authentication system going. This, this is my entire authentication script. Uh, this includes login, registration, uh, auto login, like once they've once they've closed the application and come back in, handles all of this just in this this small amount of code. Obviously, this is just the white label login, but you can add a bunch of other uh, native platforms as well. They've opted for a callback style workflow. You use this static object, you call a function and you give it the parameters and then also a callback. So for example, here on registration clicked, this response will say, was the registration successful or not? Uh, if it was, then I continue with my flow. Pretty easy. I would have probably preferred an asynchronous workflow to be honest, but uh, callbacks work just fine. Depending on uh, if they're registering or logging in, uh, I go along with that. And then if I detect that their name is, is empty, I'll show them that prompt, which you saw before, uh, that would just allow them to set their name. And then I will just continue to the dashboard. So then we're here now and there's a few things going on here. So 
there's this leaderboard here, which I'm not on yet. And there's this roll the dice. And you, as you can see, I'm level zero right now. So if I click roll the dice, it'll pick a random number. And I've just reached level one. So that's showing off the progression system, which I'll show you in a second. And this is also the leaderboard. So it, it submitted my score to the leaderboard. And as you can see, I wouldn't have actually reached the top five there. I would have been sixth, but I show that anyway. So I just want to show you how easy it is to actually implement those two things into your game with Loot Locker. So let's go across to the code. So here I've got a uh, roll the dice. It finally comes out to a number and then I just submit my score. And all we're doing is calling the Loot Locker SDK uh, static instance and saying submit score, uh, giving it the user ID of the current logged in player, the score that they just got, the leaderboard name, because obviously you can have multiple leaderboards. That could be like one leaderboard per level if you're doing speedrun type of games or uh, more general boards like what I've got. It will return a response. If that's true, cool, they've just been added to the leaderboard. Uh, and if that's true, I will give them some experience. So I'm directly going into my progression level system. So here in the same way that I call this, Loot Locker SDK, submit experience. I'm giving them one per roll. Uh, and then that response will also tell me, uh, did they just gain a level from this? If so, let's show that uh, level uh, up screen. And the cool thing about levels actually is that you can tell Loot Locker to gift players items once they reach a certain threshold. Once the player reaches level 20, gift them a mount or whatever, right? Loot Locker also handles things like loot boxes and variations. So variations is in like a cosmetic items. So the same, the same item type, it's just got a com cosmetic change to it. And for the loot boxes, they actually handle the randomly generated logic. So uh, you say open loot box and they'll pick the random item on the server side and then send the client the ID of the item that they just won. And then on your game, you can look up what that ID is and be like, congratulations, you just want a like a uh, camel mount or something, you know? I don't know why it's always mount, but a camel mount. There are just two more quick features that I would like to go through. The uh, messages. So have you ever played a uh, like a mobile game? You log in one day and there's a message that shows up on the main menu that says, sorry for the downtime. Here's some uh, emeralds or something to say sorry. Or uh, there's a server maintenance coming up or whatever. So they can actually create these messages in the dashboard and then your game will fetch them and then display them if the user hasn't seen them already. And you can actually do that without patching or updating the game, which is very handy. And the last thing I wanted to show was the user generated content. So you might have like a level editor in your game or something. So you can actually have these users upload these levels. You could also potentially have some kind of like Roblox style thing where players are making 3D items and then uh, other players can actually buy the items, right? It's in kind of like a peer to peer store. That would be cool. Might require a little bit of extra work, but pretty cool features. Uh, there are a few things that I would like to mention. For example, uh, the SDK right now uses a bunch of statics. So if you're using enter play mode settings, it can really stuff it up. Like you basically can't use enter play mode settings while uh, while you're using Loot Locker. Uh, I have talked to the devs about this and they're gonna actually fix it. And secondly, a really good plus for this system is that you can actually use the entire thing using uh, REST API. So you don't need the SDK, you can just uh, authenticate directly, grab your uh, JSON web token, store it, and then just hit all the endpoints with your token. Um, if you wanna keep your code super clean and lean, you don't actually need the SDK, which is amazing because with, uh, for example, Firebase, I was trying to do this all via REST API because their, their SDK is massive, but there's just no good way to do it. So Loot Locker actually offers the full documentation for REST API, which I thought was absolutely amazing. Anyway, if that seems interesting to you, click the referral link down below to go check out Loot Locker. As I said previously, this code is all available on my GitHub. If you want the full project, that can be found on my Patreon. And I uh, hope this helped some of you guys out.